Thank you, Lord. Let's open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians 3. I'm going to begin verse 14 through verse 21. Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 21. get there, I'll know by you standing on your feet in honor of the word of the Lord. Ephesians 3, 14 through 21, everybody have that? Yeah. All right, let's read together. Ready, read. For this reason, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Verse 19, I know everybody knows verse 20 pretty well. But verse 19 says, it's part of what Paul's prayer and desire for us and what is the spirit of God's desire and prayer for us. Is that we know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. And then notice this last line here. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I want to use that particular section there as a launching pad for the next a couple weeks or so. I want to begin a series on called The Maximized Life. The Maximized Life. Father, we thank and praise you today for the opportunity we have now to share, to open your word. Thank you for ears that hear and eyes that see, hearts that understand and receive your word. And I pray that, Father, that as we receive the word uh, in good ground, that it will produce in us that which you've sent it to produce, that, Lord, we would have the kind of lives that will be enviable to the world and bring glory to you so that we can be a light in the midst of darkness and the world be drawn to that light and we can tell everybody about Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, and our soon-coming King. Be glorified. Lord, let the word flow freely today, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. All right, take your seats this morning. The maximized life. Can you say that with me? The maximized life. Maximized. I, I like when things are maximized. One thing that irks me <laughs> is when we have something available and don't maximize it. I shared with the media team before, you know, we have... We buy equipment and things like that. I want to see that equipment maximized. I want to know everything it can do, right? right. When, when you buy a car and the, the salesman tells you about all the different features of the car, you want to maximize it. I want to, right. I want, I want to get everything that, that I can get out of that car. If it, they say it can do this, I want to try it out. Yes. I want to see just what this baby can do is what they say, right? Well, God's given us a life that he wants us to maximize. Amen? Amen. In fact, it is... God gave us life as a gift, but how we maximize it is our gift back to him. God doesn't want us to minimize this life and opportunity he's given us, but rather to maximize it. Now, God sent Jesus Christ to restore us, you've heard me say this before, back to uh, Eden conditions, right? Remember the Garden of Eden where everything was perfect, and uh, Adam and Eve were in rightful position, they were under, living under rightful conditions and living uh, in rightful operations. And God's trying to get us all back to that same, that very place. Amen? Amen. And he doesn't want us to settle for anything less than the fullness of life, than the fullness of God. The Bible says that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Everybody say fullness. 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 Say it again. Fullness. Fullness. We know the scripture over in John chapter 10, verse 10, uh, the thief does not come, comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The Amplified Bible, if we were to look at that, says that uh, I am come that you might have and enjoy life, how? 
have an abundance to the full, to the overflow. So in other words, the meaning of what Christ said was, I came for you to have a full life, to live and enjoy the fullness of life. So in other words, life, life is, is probably a lot more than, than we're experiencing right now. The fullness of the God kind of life. That's what he's talking about here. The fullness of life. I came so that you might have and enjoy life to the full. I didn't come for you to barely make it by. I didn't come for you to just mosey on through and just uh, trudge on your way home to glory. I came that you might have the fullness of life. I want you to just think about that, what I'm saying to you for a second. He said, I'm coming for you to have the maximized life. I've come for you to, to experience everything so that when you leave here, you leave with no regret. One, one thing that, that in sports they tell you, uh, whether it's Little League all the way up to pro uh, sports, especially football or, or basketball sports like that, real contact, tough sports, is they say when you finish the game, make sure you've left everything on the field. They say you give it everything you got. Don't come home with nothing. So it ought to be when you finish that, that, that football game or whatever it is, you're so spent. <sighs> all you want to do is crash. Because you gave everything you got. And, and, and in other words, your coach, what, what, whatever they're, what they're saying is, I, I don't mind losing if I know you've given everything you got. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So God for us, he, he doesn't mind us leaving here. Uh, the other day, uh, last Sunday, in fact, uh, many of you know uh, Brother Charles Capps. Brother Charles Capps wrote uh, some great little books. Uh, God's creative power worked for you. Many of us have had his books, his teachings uh, for many years now. Uh, Sunday, he went on uh, to heaven uh, at 80 years old. Now, it wasn't a surprise to him. He didn't, he didn't die of any sickness or disease. He didn't die of a car accident. He didn't die of old age. He died because he said, I'm done. In fact, as, as, uh, as his family tells it, uh, fr two Fridays ago, he called his family in, his wife and his two daughters, and said, hey, uh, I'm going to leave here on Sunday. Now remember, this is the guy who's taught us about life and death being in the power of the tongue. He, he taught us how to live by the power, of, by, with, how to have power of life with the tongue. And so when he came time, time for him, his desire, you know, because you can say, I'm finished. Paul said, I finished my course. I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I'm ready to be off. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to depart. Remember Paul had said earlier, uh, I have a desire to depart, but I, I need to stay here with you. So Brother Charles Capps said, I'm done. So at 80 years old, he told his family on Friday, he said, listen, uh, 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 I'm, I'm going to leave here on Sunday, and I'm, I'm going on to heaven. I'm, I'm done now. And they said he laid down Friday night, or uh, Saturday night, rather, and Sunday, morning, uh, Sunday afternoon, rather, he was gone. He went just the way he said he was going. Now, now listen, wait, okay, 120, yeah, God doesn't mind you leaving early. If you left everything on the field. He doesn't mind you and I leaving here early if we've done all we can do. We've maximized our lives to the hill. We've finished the assignment. And we've gotten everything we're supposed to get and done everything we're supposed to do and reach all those we're supposed to reach. Hallelujah. And, and when we leave here, the devil had nothing in us. See, he doesn't mind then. So God wants us to live a maximized life. I came that you might have and enjoy life to the full, till it overflows. This scripture over here in Ephesians chapter 3, we, we opened with, Paul says again in verse 14, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father, or I'm praying to God, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So the whole family in heaven and earth is named after Jesus Christ. The whole family in heaven and earth is named after Jesus Christ. The whole family is where? Where's where the, where the whole family? In heaven and earth. So we have some of our brothers who are in heaven. Some of our brothers, the rest of us, we're here on earth, but we're all one family. Do you notice the connection he just made? That, that he, he, he took away the distinction between heaven and earth for us? I don't think some of y'all caught that. He, he took away that separation between heaven and earth for us. 
In other words, what, what Paul has just, has just said to us that those in heaven of our family, they're just upstairs. We're downstairs, but we're still in the same house. You got to catch that. You, you got you to you catch what, what we're getting here is that, is that he took away that barrier, that, that, that line of separation between heaven and earth for us. So when you and I, when it's time for us to depart, we just say, hey, I'm, I'm moving to heaven or I'm moving upstairs. You got it? But everything that is in heaven is available to us downstairs. The Bible says God has already blessed us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 or so. He's already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In other words, everything's already, already there for us. Peter said that there's an inheritance that's been reserved in heaven for you. Are you understanding this? There's a blessed life that's been reserved in heaven for you. That doesn't mean it's reserved in heaven like you got to wait till you, till, till you get to heaven to get it. It's saying that's where, that's where it is. It's being reserved. It's being kept there. It's stored in heaven for you. But you by faith can pull down what is reserved for you down into the earth realm. That's what God wants you and I to do is to bring heaven down to earth, days of heaven on earth, days of heaven on the earth. Are you getting what I'm saying to you this morning? So God wants us to live a maximized life. He wants us to live a full life. He says here, uh, verse 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. I'll talk about that at a later time. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through what? Faith. Through what? Faith. faith. So faith require is what's required for Christ to dwell in your hearts. Right? Faith. That you being, so this is your foundation. This, this is how you start out. Being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints, what is the width and length and depth and height? In other words, he's saying, I want you to be able to comprehend something that's big. He's, he's painting a picture of something that's so huge. It's out of this world. He says here, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Y'all saying amen, but I don't know if you caught that. He said to know something that's beyond knowledge. Okay. To know something that's beyond knowledge. Come on, catch up with me now. He said my prayer, and if he's praying his prayer by the Spirit, it's a prayer that's going to be answered. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. This is something that's beyond human comprehension. It's beyond our own human attainment. It's something that you grab by the Spirit of God. That God wants to reveal to you the love of Christ. He wants you to understand how much Christ loves you. How much God loves you and all that he has prepared for you. The Bible says that if God, in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, that if God did not spare his own son, but freely gave him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? God loved us so much, he didn't spare Jesus. I want you to know. He said, I want you to know that. I want you to understand that. I want you to understand how much you are loved. Ask your neighbor, do you know how much you're loved? Come on, help, help somebody this morning. Some, somebody here, may, they may not feel love. Do you understand how much you are loved? I mean, there are people who are, they're, they're, they're clamoring, trying to find the love of a man, and the love of a woman, the love of a, of a parent, they, my parent. And, but do you know how much you're loved so much so that God would send his own son to die on a cross for sins he did not commit to give us righteousness that we did not deserve? That's how much he loved us. And how much he still loves us. He so loved the world. Are you understanding this here? So he loves us so much. He loves us so much. But he says that if he gave up Jesus Christ for us, he'll also freely give us all things. So I want you to understand how great his love is. It's beyond human comprehension here. Now watch what he says here. This next line. This is my, 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 my line here. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That you 
you human being may be filled with the fullness of God. That word filled, I'll give you a little Greek lesson this morning. That word filled is the Greek word pleuro, or actually pleuro, which means to fill to the full, to cause to abound, to furnish or supply liberally, to fill to the top so that nothing shall be wanting to full measure. Fill to the brim. So he says, God, I want, you to be, I want you to be fully supplied, fully furnished, liberally supplied, filled to the top, filled to the point where there's no lack, or, or that, filled to a full measure. Everybody say full measure. Full measure. Full measure. Full measure. God, God thank you, Lord. God thinks and, and talks in, in full measure status. You know, the Bible talks about how uh, uh, Abraham, Moses, uh, men, those patriarchs, uh, talks about ser- several of them, it says they died being full of days. <laughs> now, in other words, they, they didn't die before time. You know, there's this, this misconception that, you know, when God calls your name, when he calls your number, your, your, you got a time. And somebody dies at 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old, you know, it was their time. No, no, there's a full measure of time. I don't care what people teach and say out there. There's a full measure of time that we're supposed to live out. We're we're supposed to live out, the Bible says, the fullness of our days. Anything short of the fullness of our days, either we left on our own, like Brother Caps did, or the devil snuffed us out. Got it? God didn't have some sinister plan to call you home at 63 years old. That's, that's, not, that's not how God works. People preach that. That is not how God works according to the Bible. According, we're, we're Bible people, right? All right. The Bible talks about the Gentiles or, or the, the, the sin world. It says that even in sin, there's a fullness of sin. That, that at some point, that, in other words, you, you picture sin or, or God's, God's, God's uh, uh, tolerance of sin in a, as a container. And the Bible says the time is going to come, Daniel said this, that when they have filled the full measure of sin, there's a point where God's going to say, all right, that's it. And we're getting close. Because the Bible said in that time is when all of a sudden the Antichrist or the deceiver would show up now on the earth when they've reached, when, when the world has reached its full measure of sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So in everything, there's a fullness in everything. Fullness of sin, fullness of life, fullness of uh, of days. So there's also, we know now, a fullness of God. The Bible says, his prayer is that you and I will be filled, liberally supplied, abundantly supplied, uh, full measure of the fullness of God. So you and I, can be filled with the fullness of God. Let's look at that word fullness. That word fullness in the Greek is the word uh, pleroma. Pleroma, listen to this. In the New Testament, body of believers, as that which is filled with the presence, power, agency, riches of God and of Christ. Well, y'all must be reading, reading a magazine or something. All right, let me, let me read this over again. In the New Testament, this word, he's telling us what he wants, what, what, the, what the prayer is. This is what God's desire is for us. That you and I will be filled to the full with the presence of God. How many of y'all want to be filled with the presence of God? Because the Bible says in his presence, come on, there is. How many of you want your joy full? So when you go to work, when you're on the interstate and somebody cutting you off, joy comes out. Right? Come on now. Some, somebody talk about your mama, joy still comes out. Amen? They're they going to lay off on the job, but joy still comes out. Joy is a noun. Uh, the verb form of joy is rejoice. So you rejoice in the Lord always, and again, you rejoice. Why? Because you've been filled with the fullness of God, and you have his presence on the inside of you. So not only do you have uh, the fullness of his presence, but you have the fullness of his power. His power. The ability of God on the inside of you. Are you understanding this? He says, I want you to have the fullness of God's ability. 
what can God do but fail? Anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. God always wins. He never loses. So when you get filled with his power, there's a winner on the inside of you. Oh, tell your neighbor, there's a winner in you. Come on, encourage him. There's a champion on the inside of you. There's a lion that needs to roar on the inside of you. There's a person who has victory always on the inside of you. There's no loser on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Woo-wee! See, when you catch this, you start walking with a little swag because... You get your little pimp by your wow, wow, pow. You know, you get a little bounce in you because you understand there's a champion. I, I'm, I, I'm God inside minded. It's God on the inside of me. How come you have so much confidence? It ain't in myself. It's because I have God on the inside of me. There's nothing about me in the natural to give me confidence. But when I realize on the inside is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. I walk and I can stand in front of a CEO, Pastor Kim. I can walk and stand. I wouldn't be ashamed. I wouldn't be embarrassed. Wouldn't be intimidated to stand in front of President Obama because he's just a man. But I have God on the inside of me. I'm a God man. I got his power, his agency, his authority, his dominion is on the inside of me. That's, that's, that's the authority to use that power. That's the authority to use that power. You understand there's a difference between power and authority. I want to ask this out, you know, you don't have to answer this in public, but many of you have a weapon, a gun, Right? But just because you have a gun doesn't mean you have the authority. That gun represents power. But it doesn't mean you have the authority to use yours. You got to go through something to get the authority. Authority must be given or delegated to you for you to use that authority. So we have his agency. But look at what else he said here. We have the riches. Oh, you're making it up. I didn't make it up. It's in, you can put it up on your, on your little computer. The riches, the riches, the riches. I said the riches. He said, I want you to be filled with the riches of God. Oh, shucks. I'm, the riches of God. Come on now. My God shall supply all your need according to his Riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah, you, yeah people try to spiritualize. You can't spiritualize riches. It's, it's, it's riches. It's, it's everything God owns. And he says, I want you to be filled with that. To the full. With everything God owns. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. So how are you going to be worried about meal, a meal at tomorrow and, 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 and what you're going to eat next week when the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God and you, if, if you act right, you get filled with all that. Which means all your supply need comes from the inside. Y'all didn't catch that. Everything you need comes from the inside, not from the outside. If you catch that, you'll stop tripping about the outside. And start living from the inside. And whatever you need, you'll, supp you'll supply right out from the inside of you. You'll begin to use your authority and begin to speak and call those things that be not as though they were. See, he, wants, he said, I want you to be filled with that. A man shall be satisfied with fruit, with good. His belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Yeah. That's right. Feel. Feel. In other words, you'll, get, you'll receive from what comes out of you. 
Are y'all catching what I'm saying to you this morning? He said, you'll be satisfied, you'll be fed, you'll be, t- you'll be clothed, you'll be housed, you'll be provided for, you'll live abundantly, you'll, you'll go on many vacations as you want to go on based on what comes out of you, not what's coming to you. If you can get the right things coming out of you, God will get the right things coming to you. I, he said, I want you filled with the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm telling y'all, I, was, I, was, I, was, I, I had, had to stare off while Pastor Kim was talking early because I didn't want to well up because I knew I had to preach. Because, I, I, see, I know what she's talking because I'm living it. I'm, uh, it's, that's, that's my partner right there. We, we've been going through this thing together now. Hallelujah. We, we've been working this thing together. I was, I was in my prayer time Thursday, Thursday morning. Oh, and in, in my prayer time, I'm sitting there praising God and thanking God. And all of a sudden, I got overwhelmed in my prayer time. Because I'm giving God thanks, and all, all of a sudden, it hit me. And I know it's the Holy Spirit who helped me understand it about how this word has changed my life. See, y'all, y'all I hear y'all, y'all testify, Pastor, thank you for this word. This word has changed my life. This word has changed my life. And I, I don't just, when, I, when I'm saying this word, I don't just mean, you know, the, the word I'm preaching. I'm talking about this book. It almost don't matter to me who preaching it. I can just read it, and I read it every day, and I meditate it every day, and how much it has changed my life. Because I remember I've been saved now 25 years. This past month, February, saved 25 years. Come April, I would have been preaching 25 years. 25 years. It's, I've been a long time in this race. But I hadn't always been running hard. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I've been in the race a long time. Come on. Come on. But I hadn't always been running hard. I hadn't always been, you know, working it. I hadn't always been, been intentional about living right and serving God. Come on, don't, don't look at me funny. I'm, it's a few of y'all in here like me. You, 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 you weren't always living right just because you were saved. I know some of y'all got super saved the first day and you quit everything, stopped everything, you never went back, but that ain't my testimony. I'm just being real. That ain't my, that ain't my, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't always, cause I, I wasn't always surrounded by people who, 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 who pushed me like that. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't always in an environment or even a preaching where, where I was shown this is the way to go. It, it, it was preached, but it wasn't necessarily lived. So, so, so. So many times you become a product of your environment. Yes, sir. Come on. That's it. Now, now I, I can't go to God at judgment and blame my past on my environment, though. Because the Bible says I'm going to give an account of every deed done in my body. See, this book was available to me even when I wasn't right. You understand what I'm saying to you? So, 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 but I remember... When, when, when Pastor Kay and I got married, and we began to get into the word, and we, we heard uh, the Copeless say this, and we, we grabbed this, that from now on, whatever we see in the word, we're going to do it. We're not going to question it. Not going not gonna to have to build up our faith for it. Just cold turkey. Just, just ride with it. And I said, God, I'm sitting there just crying that morning in my, in my prayer. Just, God, it's just amazing when I look back at my life 14 years ago. I've been saved 25 years. But when I look at, I compare where I was 14 or 15 years ago to, to today. See, that's when the real change is being to take place. Oh. I know some of y'all, you just, you, you know, you always ate your apple and always drunk your water, but I didn't always eat my apple and drink my water every day. I, 
took all your vitamins and ate all your vegetables. I'm talking about in the spirit. I know y'all, some of y'all. But how has changed my life where I am now? And I know, God, if it hadn't been for your word, I know where I'd be. You know, people say, I don't know where I'd be, but what? I know where I'd be. Because I remember where I left off. I remember where that train was headed when I pulled the, pulled the thing and let me off. I know where it was headed. Everybody, you got, everybody got a Bible or your iPad? Just put it in your hand. Just, 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 ooh, just. See, that, that's the way I am it, through the day. That's, I, oh. God, I thank you for this word. This word has changed my life. Anybody else have a testimony? Come on, say it. Say, this word has changed my life. This word. This word, this word, this word, it has changed my life. That's why, that's why I love it. I'm like the psalmist, oh, how I love that law. I meditate on it all day long. I love your law. I love your word, God. I love your word. Every time I look at it, I see something great. I love your word because when you, the word when I when I do what I want to teach you over the next couple weeks here it'll change your life I guarantee you if you would stick with the word do what I teach you you will never be the same I'm a case study on it I am exhibit A oh I ain't y'all don't hear what I'm saying I said I am exhibit A. Do I have any other exhibits in the building today that know? If we were called in the court to testify on God's behalf, on the word's behalf, I am exhibit A. This word has changed my life. Now watch this. God, his word has the power on the ins- in the word itself. To completely transform our lives so that we can be filled with the fullness of God. And the word has been sent here for this very purpose. Hallelujah. The word is meant to produce something in us. Look look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 and 8 real quick. I know you know the scripture. Let's put our eyes on it for a moment here. Joshua chapter 1. Hallelujah. This this is going to be kind of a refresher course. I know we got some, some of you spiritual superstars in here, but we need a refresher course. <laughs> some of y'all are track stars. You running this race on, boy, you running it on. But we need some refreshers, don't we? Yeah, that's I want to take you down to the fundamentals. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Only be strong and very courageous. This is God talking. That you may observe, come on, to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may what? Wherever you go. This book of the law, come on, which is the word, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall do what? Come on. How often? That you may observe to what? Do according to all that is written in it, for then... You will make your way prosperous, and then, are you seeing this here? So he said, if you and I would do this word, look back in verse 7, he says, we'll prosper wherever we go. Say wherever. 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 (laughs) I mean, you can prosper anywhere. You don't have to be in Orlando. You don't have to be in Atlanta. You don't have to get to L.A. to prosper. You can be in tiny Rubonia. 
You can live down in Palmetto. You can live in, in Kennedy City. You can, you can live in Gulfport. You can live in, you, it doesn't matter where you live if you do the word. You can prosper. You can, you can live in the Appalachian Mountains. You can live in Alaska. You, you can live in the Amazon forest. But if you would do the word, you'll prosper wherever you go. Hallelujah. Look over here at Psalm number one. Psalm number one. Hallelujah. Psalm number one. Oh, we're going to see about the blessed man here. How many blessed people do I have in the house today? Psalm number one. Verse one. Blesses the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but our delight. Oh, anybody remember the rapper's delight? Yes. But I, this is the righteous delight here. Oh, yeah. Is in the law of the Lord. The righteous man's delight is in the law of the Lord. The saint's delight is in the law of the Lord. The saint's delight, the believer's delight is in the law of the Lord, in the word of God. And in that word or in his law, he, we meditate, come on, day and, day and night. There it is again. We shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. What a prosper? Whatever. So we saw earlier that wherever... Now we're seeing whatever. And who can do this? Whoever will do this. Whoever will meditate on his word day and night. Whoever will meditate and observe to do it. The key in here is not just meditating, but meditating with the purpose of doing it. And if you do it, then wherever you go, you'll prosper. And whatever you do, you'll prosper. Talking about a maximized life here. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Let's roll on here. Isaiah 55. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. Verse 10, please. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth. And make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. So the rain and the snow come down to, to water the earth. So the word comes down to water the earth. What earth? Us. We were made from the earth. When you die, you return to the earth. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We return to the earth because we're made of the earth. So the water comes down, the rain and the snow come down to water the physical earth. The seed of the word or the word comes down to water the spiritual earth. You got it? So that we can, it can bring forth in bud. Y'all see that? So the word is meant to cause budding, blossoming, flourishing. The word is meant to change your life. He says, it shall not return to me void or unaccomplished, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So the word of God is meant to accomplish the will of God, and prosper in the plan of God. Wow. Ha. It shall prosper. In fact, look at verse 11. Are y'all there? Yes, sir. Look in your Bible. Look at the, the last phrase, it, will, it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. In the thing is italicized. Yeah. 
So let's take out the words in the thing. And if you do that, you won't damage the scripture. And it shall prosper for which I sent it. Or the word will prosper. That's why I sent it. You got to catch this. The whole reason I sent my word was to prosper you. I didn't send my word to bind you up. I didn't send my word to restrict you. I didn't send my word to restrain you. I sent my word to prosper you. I didn't send my word to make your life miserable or to make your life a living hell. I sent my word to make your life like heaven on earth. I didn't send my word so that you feel like you can have no joy and no happiness and, and you can't be cool anymore. My wife and I heard a song on the radio this morning. She had already heard it before. I finally heard it today on the radio. This guy sings this song about, you know, he talks about having to decide between living for God and living in the world. He talks about how he, God, I love you, but I, I love the world. And what was that guy's name? Huh? I'll call his name. What, what's his name? Jonathan McReynolds? Jonathan McReynolds. No relation. <laughs> Some of y'all will get that tomorrow. You're like, what are you talking about? No relation. <laughs> Some of y'all still need your coffee this morning. <laughs> but no relation to me. No kin to me. My first name is Jonathan. You know? So, but in the, in the gist of his song is about having to choose between serving God, living for God, and having a good life. Because he paints a picture that when he gets saved, he loses his cool, he loses all his fun, he, life becomes a drag. But I'm like, man, turn that mess up. I turn that mess up. I don't want to hear that. I'm living the blessed life. I'm living the best life. I'm living a prosperous life. I have more fun than a bear I got guts. I have more fun than the law should allow. If it got any better, you'd have to pinch me. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I don't know what's... I'm talking about this. This is the life I want to live. I, I, I'm, I'm still cool. Yeah, I, I, lit, 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 lit. Lit, I, I still got swag. What you talking about? I, but I know how to pimp right. I know, I know how to step right. I know... You understand? I, I know how to do it right. Get this thing out of your mind that, that be, you, if you follow the word, you lose out on life. The word is life. In fact, it is called the word of life. It's called the word of life. You ain't living till you get in this word. Uh, see, pe people call living all that drama. All that drama, you, you know, you need, you need, you need, you need, a, need a little drama. You need a, need a little drama. I don't need no drama. We used to say this back in the 80s, save the drama for your mama. Right? Now, that's not cool anymore, guys, so we don't, we don't say that, but you got you to keep up with cool. Because obviously cool changes, but the word don't change. The word don't change. Hallelujah. It's the word of life. He said, it shall prosper for which I sent it. I sent it for you to prosper. I sent the word for you to prosper. And that prosperity does not just mean money. I sent it for you to prosper in your family, prosper in your marriage, prosper in your health, prosper in your body, prosper with your children, prosper in your business, prosper in your schooling, prosper on your job, prosper, prosper, prosper. Everything you do, good. Wherever you go, you'll prosper. Whatever you do, you'll prosper. Anybody who hears my word and does my word, that man will be blessed in whatever he does. Don't be a hearer only, but be a doer of the word. You'll be blessed. How many of y'all want to live a blessed life? How many of you want to live a maximized life? That when you finally decide to leave, you know you left everything here. You get, God, I gave it all I got. God, and I took all you had for me. 
I didn't leave the devil with nothing. I don't want to leave the devil with nothing that God had for me. There's keys to this here. So let's go to the basics here. I got about 20 minutes left. Y'all can hang with me. All right. So there's, there's steps to, the, to this thing here. And I'm, I'm, I'm putting all back to down to the root, to the nitty gritty. Because some people, you, you might have come along in this ministry. You know, we, I've been preaching this stuff here for several years now. We've been preaching faith, and we found a lot of our old messages. Uh, we were cleaning out the Hugh Hall the other day and found a lot of old messages. I've been preaching this stuff for a long time. I didn't realize how long I've been preaching this, this, this here, the, the kingdom word. And some of y'all, you, you just got here, and you miss out on that basic stuff. So let's go back to the basics. We can all catch up together. For some of y'all, you already living it. This would be just a good refresher for how to live this thing here, all right? Now, what I told you in my testimony or in my prayer time, I realized how much the Word of God had changed my life or how much the Word of God had transformed my life. So what the Lord showed me was there are stages of this transformation. There are, there are steps that you go through to get this kind of life. And, and, and my wife and I don't intend to, 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 to tell you that we got it all down. Right? We don't want you to think that we're trying to say, oh, we got it going on so bad that we're still not growing. We are growing. We're still learning. Y'all got it? We get to learn together. Amen? All right, so let's go through these stages here. Number one, first stage, go to Romans 10, 14. Romans 10, 14. Hallelujah. Because the first thing needs to happen, because remember, the word will prosper for which I sent it. Oh, the reason I sent the word was to get you to prosper. All right, y'all remember John chapter 1? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Right? So the word became flesh, Jesus. That same word in John 10, 10, that same word said, I have come. The word said, I have come. That you might have and enjoy life to the full, to the level flows. That's why I came. That's why the word came. That's the fulfillment of Isaiah 55, verse 11. The word will prosper for which I sent it. That's why I sent the word. It's to cause you to prosper. You got it? Sent the word to bring you totally out of darkness into the marvelous light, into the good life. Now, so we, what we understand then is this, this transformation or this maximized life is going to center around the word. If it didn't, we wouldn't have a big cutout of the word on the wall. It ain't just for decoration. It's to remind you that your whole life needs to be governed by the word of God. If you do, if we do that, we'll maximize our lives. Hallelujah. So first stage is, or first step is, I need to hear the word. I need to hear the word. Write that down if you're taking notes. I need to hear the word. Romans 10, verse 14 says this. Well, let me, let me can I start? Y'all have a little extra time? Let me back up a little bit. Verse, verse 8. Verse 8. But what does it say? Well, what's the it? It is, well, uh, let, me, let, me, let me help you. It's, it's not the word. Y'all was good, though. Y'all tried. I like it. I like it. It's better for y'all to try. Praise God. But the it refers to verse 6, which says the righteousness of faith speaks on this wise or speaks this way. It, what does it say? Because right, faith, righteousness by faith talks a certain way. It says, okay, so verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith 
which we preach. That's why we preach the word of faith. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All right? So believing is very important. That's, the, that's, that's critical. Believing. For the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. You'll never experience shame anymore if you believe on, on the Lord. <laughs> Verse 12. For there is no distinction, difference between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is pluteo to all who call upon him. That word rich is pluteo in the Greek. It, it, means, it means abundantly supplied, rich, like rich, rich. Okay, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Got it? Now pick up verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not? Believed. So believing has to come before calling on him. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not? Heard. So in order to call, you must first believe. But to believe, you must first hear. Got it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now remember he said he's rich to all who call on him. He'll give his riches to all who call on him. As Paul's desire was, you'd be filled with the fullness of God, the riches of God. So he said, I'm, I'll give all that I have to those who call on me. But to call on me, you've got to believe on me. And to believe on me, you must first hear. All right? Verse uh, 14 still. And how should they hear without a preacher? That's why preaching is, is important, okay? And how should they preach unless they are sent? So and so forth. Let me skip down to verse uh, 17. So then, so then, faith, which is what believing is, comes by hearing. So he makes hearing the primary thing. He makes hearing the foundation of it all. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or we could, we could summarize by saying, faith comes by hearing the word of God. So that's our absolute foundation. I must hear the word of God. Everybody, everybody say, I must hear the word of God. Say it again, I must hear the word of God. Now listen, there must be a desire to hear the word of God. Thank y'all for repeating that. I didn't ask you to, but thank you. That means you got it. There must be a desire to hear the word of God. I must, I must desire to hear it. You know there are millions of people who don't desire to hear the word of God. There are people in the, in the church who don't desire to hear the word of God. Oh, yeah, look around you. Our church role is, is, is multiplied more than this. Of those that's on, that we call active members. But you kind of get a little, you know, I can, I can skip it here and skip there. And da, 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 da. You picking on people. No, I'm not picking on people. But, but see, I, I, my, my mentor in the faith told me this several years ago. We, we, were, playing, we were having Saturday morning manna uh, every Saturday where my mentor, Brother Tony, some of y'all remember him? Uh, not like he's dead, he's alive, very, very much alive. He's more alive today than he was over the last few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but one day we were going to cancel it because something's going on. He said, Pastor, he said, if you cancel it for what you're talking about, he said, what you're saying is that other thing is more important than the word. See, yeah, that's how my wife, I used to wear it all the time. I mean, I used to wear whoopings. See, when you're under a mentor, when you're, when you're being discipled by somebody, when you're being uh, covered by somebody, you, you want to grow. You want to, you wanna, hey, challenge me. I, you know, I, I don't have it right. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm with you. And I used to wear it all the time to the point I wanted to cry. I'm like, I really want to go over and do that. But he's, you're, what you're saying is, that's more important than the word. And that stuck with me. I never forgot that. And I've made sure since then that I never gave anything else priority over the word of God. Because other, other thing would have entertained me or I would have enjoyed it for a moment, but it would not have changed my life. I would have missed out on opportunity for, for life change. I know, I know y'all see y'all y'all get quiet and back up on me right there because you're thinking about, well, I, yeah, I, you know, but, I, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm here to challenge you. I want there to be more of these testimonies we've been hearing. 
about how this word has changed your life, but it's a process, and you have to give yourself to it. So there must be an, an earnest desire to hear the word. Look in Luke chapter 5, verse 1. I'm going to show you something here real quick. Luke 5, verse 1. As a matter of fact, I want to back up to Luke 4. Okay. Luke 4, verse 42. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I won't give it all to you today. I'll give as much as you can handle today. So. But let's, let's, let's try to get this here. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, did no testimonies bless your life today? Yes. I mean, did anybody say that sounds like me? I know what you're talking about. I, I, I can testify to that. I can say amen to that. Hallelujah. And I, I, want, I want you to understand, Pastor Kim and I don't, don't get any kind of uh, pride. We don't get any kind of lifting up and saying, well, look, see how we did that. No, that, we're not saying that because we, we're doing the same thing. Hallelujah. All right, Luke 4, verse 42. Now, when it was day... He departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowd sought him mm -hmm, and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. Now, he, he ain't fed nobody yet. This ain't about that. They, they said, no, stay with us. We, 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 now, Because look at what it said, verse 43. You understand what they were trying to get because in verse 43, look at his response. But it said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. Otherwise, so you know they were trying to say, hey, stay and preach, preach some more. Preach some more. Because he said, I got to go preach other places. I can't preach no seven-week revival with y'all. I got to go preach somewhere down the road. He said, because for this purpose... For this, come on, because for this, there it is again. Oh, God, I didn't see that. Because for this purpose, I have been sent. What has he been sent for? To keep, preach the kingdom, which is to preach the prosperity. It, he, remember he said that in Isaiah 55, verse 11. It's to prosper for which I sent it. So the word of God, wherever Jesus Christ was going, was to prosper the people, whether to bring them out of uh, financial uh, poverty, to bring them out of spiritual poverty, bring them out of soul poverty, to bring them out of uh, a situation where, where demonic influence had a city trapped. Hallelujah. To bring prosperity to a city. And he was, verse 44, and he was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. <laughs> so he didn't go nowhere. They, they constrained him because he was preaching the synagogues of Galilee. Look at chapter 5, verse 1. So it was as the multitude pressed about him. See, this is a desire to hear the word. I hear, I've heard pastors tell me this and I... I <laughs> I won't say that. I've heard pastors say this stuff about, you know, people, people in the city, they, they hungry to hear the word. They hungry to hear the word. No, they're not. I mean, it's seats open. Every pastor I talk to, there's plenty of seats open. People, reverend, people are hungry. You got to take the word to them. McDonald's don't come down the street saying, we got, hey, we got Big Macs. Hey, Georgia Big Macs. See, back, back in the day, we used to have that on our street. I don't know how many of y'all grew up in St. Pete. We used to have somebody around the street, a big old truck. Georgia sweet potatoes. And, you know, y'all remember that? Yeah. Tony, you remember that? It'd be young. We was young like that. Oh, they have watermelons. Fresh watermelons. Come down the street. Made tomatoes. Come on. Pecans. Pecans, y'all call it. They, they just bring all that stuff down the street. Yeah. Charles Chips, come down the street. Yeah. 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 Ice cream truck, come down the street. Yeah. Most places now, they don't come down your street no more. But if you're hungry for it, you know where to go get it. I know where to find it. Because when you're hungry, when you have a real desire, you go looking for what you want. And the Bible says these people, they pressed about him, pressed on him. They thronged him to hear the word of God. 
He stood by the lake of Gennesaret, or what we might call the Sea of Galilee, and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone, gone from them, and were washing their nets. Look at verse 3. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Why? They were, they were pressing to hear. Now notice what happened. You have multitudes. Picture this, picture this. You don't, don't picture 40, 50, 60 people. Picture thousands. We know at least five, if this group continues to follow him, at least 5,000 men. Plus women and children. Estimates of 20,000, 30,000 people are following him. Pressing on him so much that he on the seashore, he has to back up and get on a boat and get out of land where, where he, he can preach. Now notice again, he's doing this without microphones, without amplifiers, without PA systems, without a megaphone. He, he's, he's not at, at an amphitheater. But because they had a desire to hear, God opened their ears and God magnified Jesus' voice to allow them to hear. God divinely arranged for a boat to be sitting there because God knew if he got on a boat and he spoke, the, the water would carry his voice. The water would magnify God. Because, we, listen, if you have a desire to hear, that, that's why the internet is up. That's the whole reason for the internet. See, y'all think the whole reason for the internet for me to put in monster.com applications and careerbuilder.com. No, the internet exists because God needed people in places that did not have the privilege or the opportunity to go into a house and hear the word of God all the time for them to hear it all the time. Thank God for Al Gore inventing the internet. <laughs> that was a joke. It's probably because <laughs> you know he said I invented the internet. He he actually didn't invent the internet. <laughs> Whoever did, thank God for it. Because God needed the word of God on the high mountain so people in, that were displaced could hear because if you have a desire to hear God will divinely arrange set up things for you to hear the word of God if you're looking for a word you'll get online and search you'll find just the word you need because because you got hungry you had a desire in God the Bible says God pours water on ground that's thirsty when you're thirsty for the for the word he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled hunger for God and his word he'll make sure you hear the word not only will it make sure you hear it, but it makes sure you get it. Look at Matthew 13. See, some people come sit right in this church all the time and just don't get it. You know why? Because you're just sitting here. Many people, they come to church passing through church on the way to, to uh, po folks or something. Just passing through. You can't pass through church. God has set up an opportunity for you to be transformed, and to prosper. He said, that's why I sent this word. Matthew 13. Because God don't want you just to hear, but he wants you to get it. Matthew 13, verse 9. Are you there? He who has what? Ears to hear, let him hear. He gives a parable about the seed and the sower. But he says, with this parable, he who has ears to hear, let him hear hear. So there must be a desire to hear. Right? But let's keep going a little bit here. Verse 10, and the disciples came to him and said, came and said to him, why do you speak to them, the crowd, in parables? Now watch verse 11. And he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it has not been given. Now, in this text, by the time we arrive here over in Matthew, uh, he's, he's been feeding a few people, and people just kind of follow along with him. He's doing a few things right here. So everybody's not following him with an, with an anxiety or desire to hear. But Peter and those disciples, they have a little more, remember, they, they dropped everything to follow him. They left their businesses and their families for a time to go follow Jesus. 
So they have a little different hunger. They have a little different thirst. They have a little different passion for this word than everybody else. So he says, so to you it's been given. <laughs> In other words, not everybody is this given to. <laughs> but to you it's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Verse 12, for whoever has what? Ears to hear. We saw it in verse 9. Whoever has ears to hear, more will be given to him. And he, who, and he will have what? Y'all just missed that. You just missed, missed the shouting spot right there. And he will have what? Abundance. Now, this is abundance of knowledge. He ain't talking about abundance of knowledge. Why, why did he say he sent the word? To prosper you. So whoever has ears to hear, more will be given, and you will have abundance. Because the word of God is always meant to bring you into an abundance, an abundance of finances, an abundance of healing, an abundance of, of, of joy, an abundance of power, an abundance of anointing. You'll have more of the things you need and the more of the things you desire when you have ears to hear. He says, but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing, watch this, they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do, they, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing, come on now, and seeing, and not perceive. Why? For the hearts of this people have grown their ears, come on, uh-oh, what happened? And then notice the next part, they have closed. So there's some uh, among the crowd who don't want to hear. So I want to talk to them in parables. They only get so much. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. Verse 16. This is what I like. This, this, this is a shouting one right here. This is a shouting one right here. But blessed are your eyes. Is this anybody here today? Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears, for they hear. For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Psalm 119 verse 18 says this, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. God, open our eyes to see everything you have in your word. God, open our eyes to see the magnificent things you set up for us. Open our eyes to see your kingdom and your ways, God. Open our eyes. Now let's look at another place here. and We'll, we'll get ready to wind to a close here. Y'all are drifting off on me. Acts 13. Acts 13, verse 42. I want, I want you to see the difference between those who receive or those who desire to hear and those who refuse to hear. Acts 13, verse 42. So when the Jews, verse 42, so when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles, everybody there yet? Acts 13, 42. The Gentiles did what? Begged. You see that desire here. That, the, that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Verse 44, on the next Sabbath, almost, come on, the whole city came together. See, when there's a desire, they'll come. All right, Lord, I just heard that. Yes, I heard that. I heard that. Okay. Right. They're not all coming. Because they don't, they don't really have a real desire. You know why they don't have a real desire? Because we have not been the salt of the earth as we're supposed to be. See, any, 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 uh, any uh, 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 amusement park or, or sports vendor knows uh, <laughs> how to get over on people. So what I'll do, I'll sell you popcorn for, for 3 or $4, a lot of it. 
Popcorn doesn't cost me a lot of money at all. But I sell you a lot of it. Right? Because that, the popcorn, the saltiness, is going to make you thirsty. So when I sell you popcorn, I'm going to turn around and sell you an $8 soda that cost me 30 cents. And I'm going to get a big markup on the soda. Because I gave you something to make you thirsty. This, this is what I heard the Lord saying here a moment ago. The problem is we're not making the world thirsty. See, that's why we got to live this life out here for real, for real. Did y'all hear what I said? I mean, for real, for real. Stop playing around with this mess. Stop, stop, stop tripping on God. I mean, go and live right and show forth his praises and show off what God is doing. And what it do? It'll make the world thirsty. And when they get thirsty, then they'll come in. And they'll find living water. That's why the Bible says you are the salt of the earth. You're salt of the earth. You're salt of the earth. It's your job to make the world thirsty for Jesus. Y'all got it? Now I left off somewhere. Verse 44. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Because they had been made thirsty. <laughs> Verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting um, and blasphemy, and they opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said it was, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it. See, so these people are rejecting the word. And judge yourselves, judge yourselves, judge yourselves unworthy of the God kind of life. That's that word, the everlasting life, is the, is the Greek word zoe, which means the God kind of life. This is that life we're talking about, maximized life. You're saying you're not worthy because you reject the word. Because Paul knows the word is going to bring you the God kind of life. Behold, we turn to the Gentiles, for, the, for the, so the Lord commanded us. He said, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Verse 48. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to everlasting life, eternal life, the God kind of life, did what? They believed. They believed. They were appointed to it. They believed. And they received it. Because they didn't reject, they, they didn't refuse the word of God. See, this is the very foundation, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is all elementary to y'all, and, you know, y'all are so well advanced in your faith, and you, you are faith giants and all that kind of stuff, and you, you pulling down strongholds and landing things by faith. But I'm talking about sometimes. If, 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 if the house isn't the way you want it to be, sometimes you can just paint change paint and you can give it a fresh new look but sometimes you got to take that house down to the studs knock some walls down and just get down to the root to the foundation and build it back up so it's right that's what God's got us doing in this maximized life uh, series that we're in here is to take it back down to the studs and teach how we get this thing. And the number one key is, listen, is to hear the word. It's to hear the word. I, I, I got more other places to go, but I'm going I'm to stop here. Because really, that's enough for us to meditate on all week. <laughs> to hear the word. It's, it's, I got to cultivate, there it is, Sister, Sister Carol, I got to cultivate that desire. I got to find out, man, how, do, am I really hungry for the word? How long can I go without the word? Because if you find that, you know, you can go through the day and hadn't heard the word and go through a couple days and hadn't heard the word, you come to church, 
you know, maybe just on Sundays and hear the word and may come to church on Wednesday and, and hear a little bit. And, you know, it's tickle my, my fancy and entertain my ears. That's, that's not, that's not going to transform your life. And you'll find after a while you will, you will have been spinning your wheels. You know, anybody ever been in a car and uh, got caught in some soft sand or dirt or whatever, mud, and the more you spun your wheels... I mean, you put a thing on the floor, vroom, vroom, your engine is working hard, but you're just sinking deep, going nowhere. Somebody got to come tow you out. I'm here with the tow truck this morning. You got to go find you a wood plank and put something under that tire, get some traction. I want us to build some traction. Because, I, you know, I, I am I am a... Let me just say this. As a pastor, I am uh, very well pleased, if I can say that. I know I can't say that. I'm very well pleased with, with so much progress I'm seeing. Man, you, God's doing some great things in your lives. I'm seeing people are making great strides in the Lord. But I want to make sure I continue to push and challenge. And sometimes I have to jug at you. Sometimes, you know, you can have a person who think they all that, yeah. and you got to jug at them and make them realize, you ain't all that yet. <laughs> and it's not meant to be condemnation, but I just got to remind you, oh, I, I, oh yeah, I hit, I hit 12 out of 15 shots. I got to remind you, you missed three. <laughs> you should, yeah, but you missed three. And, and, and the three you missed could have won the game. We lost the game. You celebrating about your 12 out of 15. Wow. That ain't good. I, I, I admire the 12 out of 15. But you missed three very important shots. So, so I want, what I want to do is make sure I encourage you so that we can, like I said, I'm not trying to pretend like I got it all going on and I, I can write the book on it. I can't write the book on it yet, but I can teach the book. Teach the book. Yes. And if we get into it, we're going to get it. And number one thing is what? Hear the word. I got to hear the word. I got to increase my hearing. Yeah, I, yeah that's right. I, I, can't, I can't miss church. I, I got I to gotta, I gotta be in a place to hear. Now, I, I admonish you and I encourage you. Uh, I demand you. Uh, listen to the word during the week. Go online, go, get on television. Be careful on television. Because uh, there ain't a lot of good word out there. You got Jesus, When Jesus gave those parables in, in Matthew 13 and Mark 4, he said, whoever hears the word of the kingdom. So there's a particular word he's talking about. Because it's the word of the kingdom that's going to prosper you. Not just any social word and, you know, feel good emotional word. But it's the word of the kingdom that's going to prosper you. So I encourage you to get it. But what I, I want to remind you of, how should they hear without a preacher? So, so the preached word is, is vital, is crucial yes. Yes. to you being transformed. Amen. And I believe if we keep on doing this, boy, hot dog. Hot, dog. <laughs> hot diggity dog, boy, it's going to be some mighty, mighty good stuff coming out of this place and in your lives. How many of y'all are ready to be transformed to a whole new level? Keep those hands in the air. Father, today I thank you and I praise you for every one of these, your people. I thank you that we're all on this journey together. And you have sent your word to prosper us, to increase us, to bring us a maximized life. I speak now, God, over every life here this today, God. Over everything that relates to them, God, that, that we'll begin to see maximum, maximum in every area of our lives. Maximum in our health, maximum in our finances, maximum in our walks with you, maximum in our bodies, oh God, maximum, Lord, in our, in our businesses, Lord, maximum, Lord, in our careers, maximum in our education, God, maximum in everything that pertains to us, God. I speak and declare the fullness that you be filled with the fullness of God. Hallelujah. And God, you said that, Lord, you are able to do exceeding, exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us.
God, I think that as this power continues to work in every one of these, your precious people, that we'll begin to see exceeding abundant things. God, you're able to go far beyond our dreams, far beyond our imaginations, far beyond what we can see, Lord. Think of that, God, that we'll begin to see maximum, maximum outcome, Lord, in every area of our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you are doing it. And we, we even today stir ourselves up to hear your word more. We stir ourselves up, God, to hear your word even more, God. Give us a hunger. No, 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 Lord. We stir ourselves up, God. We hunger and thirst after righteousness, God, and you said we'll be filled. And you said that whoever has, more will be given, and we'll have an abundance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for revealing to us the missions of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, that these people will be filled with the fullness of God. We give you praise and glory and honor for today. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you receive that this morning, give God a great praise. Thanksgiving. Hallelujah.